Hello students, we have been studying chapter 6 learning of class 11 psychology. Today we arrive at part 7 of this chapter in which we shall deal with the different factors facilitating learning and the various learner learning styles. You might have noticed in your life that you are different from other people with respect to learning and you are different even from yourself when it comes to learning different tasks. You might be good at mathematics but very poor at geography. You might not grasp history quickly but might do that nicely with literature. On the other hand, somebody is a good artist and somebody else is a good musician. The students who are good at sports might not be good at reading and writing abilities. What does this tell you? There are different factors that predispose a person or an organism for that matter to acquire certain concepts, skills and conditioning learning abilities. And also there are different learners who interact in different ways with the learning styles. This brings us to the factors that affect learning and also the styles that differentiate different learners from the other ones. So what are these factors that make you learn a task quickly or slowly? that get you interested or more efficient and effective in a particular trait than in other traits. Psychologists with immense research and a lot of laboratory experiments have discovered three kinds of basic factors that facilitate learning. These are the kinds of learning schedules used, motivations and predisposition of a person or preparedness of a species to learn. Let us talk of them one by one. Different kinds of reinforcement schedules is what we talked of during conditioning trials. So we know there are two kinds of reinforcement schedules. Continuous in which every stimulus which is a conditioned stimulus is followed by a conditioned response. That is the desired response leads to the reinforcement in all the trials. There are different kinds of schedules which are partial reinforcement schedules. These means when only at certain situations the desired response is reinforced and in some other trials the desired response is not reinforced. This might be done by the experimenter as per a predecided schedule. It has been observed that learning is the quickest and even the extinction is quickest with the schedules which are continuous. Why so? Because the organism is clearly able to distinguish between the trials when he was getting reinforced and those in which he did not receive any reinforcements. On the contrary, during partial reinforcement schedules, it is very difficult to demarcate when the reinforcement actually stopped as compared to when it was just being stopped for an interim period of time. So what kind of reinforcement and how many times you are being given this depends and leads to the acquisition of learning. Let us take an example to clarify this. If as a child every time you came to school with dirty shoes you were made to stand in a line of defaulters in your assembly and you were punished to say run two rounds of the ground. If this was happening each and every time so this is a negative reinforcement and you would like it to get extinguished and hence the learning of coming with clear shoes and proper dress up to the school occurred quickly. On the contrary, if you came to school every day with dirty shoes and your teacher punished you only sometimes and not other times, you would think, okay, I can maybe escape today. Today is not the day that I would get punished, so you would not care to polish your shoes. The second factor that determines the speed of learning is motivation. By definition, Motivation is the mental and physiological state that arouses an organism to act for fulfilling their current needs. These can be intrinsic as well as extrinsic. Intrinsic motivation as the name suggests are inherent to the organism. Thirst, hunger, feeling cold, so any of the physiological or biological needs that arouse you and 
prompt you to conduct and do work in a certain manner are intrinsic motivators. Extrinsic ones arrive from your environment. The motivation to buy a new car because all my friends have a car is an extrinsic factor. The need to actually cook food because I am hungry is intrinsic motivation. So how quickly would you learn to cook food when there is no one to cook for you and you really need it determines how quickly the learning would occur. On the other hand, what do you feel with respect to your social repute and what others think of you and how strong is the factor to prompt you to buy that new car or that wonderful dress is again a motivating factor. These are very precisely linked with learning and this has been established by lab experiments of hungry dogs, cold rats or pigeons who were being given food, even cats in a Skinner box who had to escape a shock. Preparedness for learning is the third factor that is the facilitator in this process. By definition, preparedness is the genetic ability of different species. It is the sensory capacities or the responsibilities and even pertains to developing associations. It is genetic, so it is inbuilt into certain species and organisms. Birds, dogs, cats, rabbits and human beings, all of them have different frameworks with respect to their brain, central, central nervous systems and other cognitive abilities. So this would determine how much can they acquire certain skills as compared to the other species. Whales, dogs learn the activities to play more quickly. Humans have been known to develop learning using different skills. The motor abilities are more easily developed by chimpanzees and monkeys as compared to say a tortoise or even a kangaroo. So these are the preparedness which are again inbuilt and inherent. This brings us friends to the second part that is the learning learner styles. How are different learners different? What are the styles that, it, that they use to acquire skills and abilities? Do you learn in the same manner as I do? Do all the friends or the classmates sitting in a particular class take in the information in a similar manner or are they all different? As psychology students, you have been told time again, time and again that we are all unique human beings. Each individual is different in their own ways. So friends, how can learning styles be any different? They are also as unique as individuals. Now what are learning styles to be precise? The definition says, the way in which each learner begins to concentrate, process and retains new complex information determines his or her learning style. There are differences in the way that people learn within the same class, culture, community, socioeconomic groups and also those belonging to different groups. So what do these learning styles depend upon? As the definition clearly states that it is not limited to your cultural background or socioeconomic status. So there has to be something more to it than those group differences. So your learning styles depend upon individual characteristics. These are derived from perceptual modality, information processing and the personality patterns. What are these factors? Let us look at them one by one. Perceptual modality. These are biologically based reactions to the physical environment. These are the preferences of persons through which they take in information like auditory, visual, smell, kinesthetic, tactile. Do you see this in your class? Some students in the class prefer to look at the blackboard and read what the teacher is writing over there. They take in the information using their sight, that is their eyes, the sensory organ. organ. Others however take in the information from the lecture or the speech that the teacher is giving. So they perceive by using the sense organ of ears or the sense of audition. Prepare well for the exam by reading the book. Some others prepare well by writing down whatever is written. Some others would like to speak out whatever they have read. I have also seen people who move about in corridors while memorizing or learning certain concepts. So, each of them has a different way and style of learning. 
the perceptual modalities are different. The writer, the speaker, the walker or just the reader, the sense organs, the perceptions are all varied. So this predisposes a particular learner depending upon what style he prefers to learn. The second is the information processing. These are the way that we structure and how these structures are employed to think, solve problems and remember the information. These can be active or reflective, sensing or intuitive, sequential or global, serial or simultaneous. Any information which is given to you, any chapter that you read, you would actually learn it differently across people from your class. Let us take this chapter learning for instance. We have divided into eight parts. Now some people would like to go to part one, then the concluding part which is part eight and then go through two, three and four. Some others however would go in a sequence. They would view one, two, three and so on. When you pick up a book, there are people who read a novel by reading the first page and the last page. Some others would actually go in a particular serial of sequence. So there are different patterns how we learn. For cooking you observe that some people would actually prepare all the ingredients, keep them on side and then do step by step. However, others would dig out and bring out an ingredient from their kitchen as and when they need it during the process of cooking. So what does this tell you? That we are all unique in our cognitive processes in the way that we process and later use the information. Third very important trait or the learning learner style is determined by personality patterns. What are personality patterns? They are the way that we deal with our surroundings. Each of us has a preferred consistent and distinct way of perceiving, organizing and retaining information. How the individuals interact with the environment and how they respond to each other in a learning environment is determined by their individual personalities. Some people when they are given a new learning task get anxious. They experience some amount of stress. It might even be positive stress or negative stress. Some people on the other hand take things very coolly. As and when the things are given to them, they go through them. These are personalities predisposed to anxiety or not so. Stress management for different people is different. So how do you actually do things and how do you interact with other people? In exam times, some people prefer to be solitarily sitting in their rooms and just reading. Some others prefer to go for group studies at their friend's place. How you approach learning will actually be determined by your opinions, attitudes, aptitudes, by your past experiences and the conditioning and learning styles that you have used. So the learner learning interaction and style is influenced by all these factors in turn. Now that you know of the learning learner styles, there are also various dimensions along which the learning styles vary. The psychologist John Anderson has given two of them which are popularly accepted. They are the relational style of learning and the analytic style of learning. By definition, relational style of learning says the ability to comprehend parts only by understanding their relationship to the whole. Now some people when they are given lessons in say driving, knitting or music lessons or singing or painting lessons, they actually are able to relate each and every chapter or each and every instruction given to them only when they apply it to the whole. You are told one stanza or one raga of a song, only when you learn the whole song or deal with it as a whole are they able to put those parts into meaning. On the other hand, some people learn part by part. So the people who are able to comprehend the meaning only as a whole go through a style of learning known as the relational style as in where they relate each part to the next one in a sequential order or in a serial order. The second style of learning that Anderson talks of is the analytic style which says it is a conceptual understanding using cumulative sequential patterns. So when you learn in a sequence 1, 2, 3, 4, 
then it is the analytic style where you are able to relate 1 to 2 and 2 to 3 and based upon the previous understanding you look at the other one. And how is it different from the relational one that we just talked of? In this you deal with it as a whole and your paths might not be in a particular sequence. It might be part 1 related to part 3 and 2 related to 5, 5 related to 7. So, it is this way, but as a whole they all bring a picture in your mind. John Anderson was able to arrive at the dimensions of learning analytical and relational based upon a lot of experiments with respect to problem solving, mathematical numericals, statistics and other such activities that required cognitive thinking or a of a higher level. Now friends, you must be careful while understanding that at one side some people are more predisposed to learning by relational dimension and others to learning using the analytic dimension. But at the same time, even one individual might use these two interventions at different times. For instance, if you go on a city tour of say Delhi and you are taken to different historical monuments, after coming back you ask to write a travelogue, then you would perceive the city as a whole relating its paths in your mind. But it is not necessary that you will think of Lal Kila, then India Gate, then the Doll Museum, that is the sequence in which you were taken to these monuments. You might first think of the one that impressed you the most or in which you felt the best and then think of the second one. You might even end up forgetting one of the monuments of which you did not care or you which did not, you did not like. So, this is learning by using the relational style you are able to relate all of them in a certain manner, but not in a sequential or a serial manner. On the other hand, the same person when dealing with say a story in his English language class would read the first part of the story, then the second and then the conclusion. So, the beginning, the middle and the end are related in a sequential manner that means he understands and learns the story using the analytic style of learning. So, where the learning styles are different for different people, they are also different for the same person engaged in different activities. This is the uniqueness of individuals and also of a single individual in different situations. This is what makes learning such a complex and an interesting phenomenon. Who does what and does he does do the same thing in different situations? What are the factors? What are the various motivators, the predispositions? or even the reinforcements and rewards that propagate you to learn, that prompt you to learn more quickly in some tasks as compared to the other ones. Children are more likely to be fascinated by story books than their course books. Both of them involve reading. There is something about it which is different. You would grasp the language more quickly from a film than you would grasp by say reading a book. This is precisely why the educational institutions have decided to provide learning by using various modes. You read a book of psychology, you are taught psychology by a teacher in your class. You also go through psychology by such video lectures. So, you can choose to learn from whichever style suits you best in whichever environment. Friends, today in this part we dealt with the factors facilitating learning and the different learner learning styles. This leads us to if different learners learn differently, are there certain disabilities pertaining to learning that apply to people specifically? Are there general applications of the learning principles around us? Of course, there are and we shall deal with them in the next and the concluding part of this chapter that is part 8. I hope these concepts have made it clearer to you how, why and when you learn differently and how can you actually change it to learn more effectively and efficiently. Wish you a happy learning. Thank you.